That was just a warm up for the main event, which was Tuesday, which is uh, a day for J2, a buddy of ours who passed away a while ago. And super character in the snowboard world and friend Jason world. Rasmus. Jason Rasmus from Kapitsky or something, New York. Moved to Breckenridge back in the early 90s, maybe 1991 or so. And uh, yeah, so it was Tuesday, which was coined by, I think, Jarrett Packer years ago. And a couple of years ago, it was February 22nd, 2022, at 2022 was the actual Tuesday that may never exist in the rest of her life. And then that was at Brighton two years ago, and I was actually up at Bald Bay, so I wasn't able to join. But anyways, uh, Brad Albert, I think it was, and a couple other people that were at that event were like, we need to kind of do this every two years just to get our groups of friends together and hang out because you don't do it enough. And so he's like, in two years, we're going to do this again. And he said it as well at this trip that two years from now let's do it again if not next year at you know on 222 2026 which is two years from now and then uh yeah so it was pretty awesome uh luckily jeff got in because uh blotto bailed because the the spots were all full so invite only event yeah run by justin hosnick justin hosnick brad albert and then a couple other people uh probably helped out on getting you know, the invites in, and we had four cats reserved at Bald Face Valhalla, and we did two days, Thursday and Friday, and now Saturday, we're driving home, and I'm pretty full, the cup is definitely extremely mm-hmm. full, the last couple runs at Valhalla, I was like, I'm good on riding powder for, like, the rest of the winter, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty awesome, I'm, like, looking forward to going home and riding groomer, because we're surfed out, we rode so much powder. And thanks to J2, we rode powder. So J2 uh, was a legend in snowboarding, a character. I uh, I knew him, uh, of him, when I moved to Colorado in 95. You knew J2 before you moved to Colorado, right? I didn't. I know who he was. He had a prolific personality and was really um, charismatic in front of the lens, kind of a goofball. And then he would do a lot of, he was a Burton rider. And this was what Chad and I were talking about, kind of that new school. What you looking for? Oh, we're good. I'm looking for that other piece I have. Keep talking. So he was J2. Um, I knew him more just from, like, absorbing media. He had, uh, so he was a Burton rider. And then he rode for other brands like Anarchy and Tech 9. And he was a good street rider. He rode for Twist. Um, But he had a lot of, I mean, a lot of friends. And people really liked him. So I... I only got to meet him uh, a couple times. I know you got to know him really well, yeah. but I, I watched his entire career from the magazine and video side, and um, he was a, a, a really um, badass rider, but I think he also was like the the colorful guy, like the, the, the splash of color, the happy, like, and that maybe like he was funk like I don't know I mean how would goof, yeah, he was goofball a character. He, he, he was a character yeah like, he, he was a character personality over corpse, he was know? personality over no no all good personality over spins like yeah. I mean but he could do that yeah so yeah he was always the entertainer in all the videos and just his character came out in his snowboard style too right like yes his hand I remember going to Brighton with him in two thousand one. And we went and hit a jump called the Sunshine Kicker. And he's just like, I'm going to go do those lines before I come down to the jump. And we look up and there's these lines. And uh, it's in the credits of AOD 2 or 1 or something. And he drops in. His hands are straight in the air. Just like, you know, I think uh, TG was telling me. It's like he's holding two pizza boxes right down there. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Always. He's the pizza box guy. Him and Andy Pass and said. And, uh. But he was a good snowboarder, so it was awesome. But he's just, he was always hanging on. And, and uh, if you've ever skateboarded with him, he's like an amazing skateboarder, too. So it's just like, it is what it is, you know? Like, uh, he was the character that was in all the movies. And Whitey will say it, too. Who, uh, Whitey made movies with him for years. And, he was like the best at the yeah. skits, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately became friends with everybody type guy, too. Um, So he was just like snowboard culture to the T and that's kind of what this whole event was to us. Like 
and myself for sure is like we were just talking about it. it was like holy shit that was like one of the more heavy snowboard cultural events I've ever been to I was definitely fanning yeah. out quietly to myself yeah. and I think what the coolest thing was now that we're older not only could I fan out I could just walk up to any one of these guys start chatting with them and they were just as the whole like back in the day too cool snowboard facade is long gone yeah. everybody's just guys now that are living lives and and uh it was so cool to be able to see everybody and connect. You know, you know them a lot better than I did, but everybody was very welcoming of, to me as a guest, so thank you for bringing me with. Yeah, yeah, that no, was awesome. Like, I remember going shredding with you and Jay, too, in 2006. I think, I believe it was. And uh, we went to Vail Pass, mm-hmm. and that was when Two's got his orange outfit. And we went to Vail Pass, we had a jump. I still have both, like, Brent was there, maybe JJ. Steve, Definitely. Steve Fisher, maybe. Uh, Pato was there shooting photos but that year uh, was the year he got his orange outfit and the orange outfit just so we can get that story out of the way was because everybody wears orange when they talk about J2 but I don't think a lot of people know why but obviously you know why because it's county orange it's that that CDOT suit that he has but we were up at the tunnel one time and he was up there in his like green Audi station wagon it was kind of green I think and he had a, you know, a snowmobile trailer and a snowmobile and was just kind of rediscovering snowboarding, coming back to Colorado, I guess. I don't know what he was doing out there, but he was staying at my house for like a month. And he was up on the tunnel and he was just BSing with like the CDOT worker and talking about the jumps that we build and this and that. And the CDOT worker was like, no way, that's awesome. I love that jump. And then he ended up making such good friends with this guy that the guy brought him into the Eisenhower Tunnel into like a secret passage and he said there's a third tunnel in the tunnel and J2 ended up trading this dude Zoo York gear skate gear and mm-hmm. then like some beer for a full orange C dot outfit and the guy's like you ever have any problems snowmobiling around here just put this thing on it oh. and you're all good and then so J2 was like back then now you'd probably get busted no matter what but back then J2 like we went up uh what is now known as Fat Chad's Tavern, uh, you know, self-claimed by myself. <laughs> Go for <laughs> or it. There's a shirky shoot back there too, but uh, otherwise it's, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's up at the tunnel and he was snowmobiling all up over there. Kurt Ryan and I have actually snowmobiled up over there as well a long time ago. Um, but yeah, that's how he got his name, his outfit. And that's why everybody wears orange when they claim J2. Uh, but anyways, we all just came to celebrate the life of J2 and our, all of our fallen friends, basically, and the life that snowboarding has given us, if it, that makes sense. And that was super cool. So there's yeah. 40 people. Yeah. At night, they're staying at the Adventure Hotel in downtown Nelson, British Columbia. Yeah. And they've got uh, a ballroom catered. So we've got catered dinners at night. Yeah. And everybody's getting together and I'm, I'm looking around the room and it is full of people that I grew up uh, idolizing in the magazines but they're you know they're and everybody's just reconnecting and, and what a powerful influence J2 had to bring all these people together a lot of them or a lot of Colorado Utah California some East Coast uh, and, and all of, you know and Canadians like it was it was a really cool tie uh, that kind of bonded everybody together and uh, it was really the social act component of it I thought was really special yeah for sure and then like friends bought, brought friends too because mm-hmm. I think some spots filled up like Lucas brought his buddy you know Toby, Toby who's just like a super character and then Shandy shows up because Shandy lives here and like you know, Shandy Campos yeah yeah and there's so, Toby Parks yeah this is last night mm-hmm. but anyway so we just made new friends and they they weren't all like characters in the industry just friends of friends and and continuing like that, like making friends into our 40s and 50s just through snowboarding is like insane to me because I remember my first group of friends was like just from snowboarding basically. And, for, and I still have those and now we're still making more friends. And being able to go to Bald Face and just the way you can like Valhalla and catboarding, uh, the way that you like snowboard with people and you have a group of 10 people like by the end of those two days. I was way better friends and got to know everybody way better. Not even just by talking to them, but just, like, by the vibe of snowboarding. Yes. Like, you know, like, you don't even have to, like, get to know them and then, like, 
10 years from now, I'll see like somebody that I met on this trip and it's like, you'll be homies and you'll be able to go ride with them all day, you know? Yeah. One of the coolest things was showing up and seeing um, Benny Pellegrino and I hadn't seen him in 20 years, but we rode Jackson, Wyoming, Jackson Hole together in 2003 and he immediately was like, Jeff Meyer, what's up, man? How are you? <laughs> And I was stoked because, you know, that's that's 21 years ago. I hadn't yeah. seen him in 21 years. Yeah. But he was down, and it, he hadn't changed a beat, and uh, that that made my day. Yep. No, it's awesome. Yeah, and like you said, it's like uh, everybody's gotten over a lot of, like, life stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, dealt with bullshit for the last 20 years. So Loss. Everybody, yeah, everybody's just, like, living for the moment here. And, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was, a, it, was a, it was special. And then the, kind of when the trip came to a close, you could see, you know, the emotional, there was a, like an emotional component where every, we'd all shared this kind of joint, uh, like high experience and reconnection. So it was really, um, really, really kind of touching. And, um, you know, for, for you, Chad, you've been, you know, blessed with such a great snowboarding career. And you've made all these connections throughout all the years, so it was interesting to, as an as a, somebody step back, to watch how that's kind of become your family, like, um, you know, that your family and your community, and, and how you navigate that. That was really interesting and exciting to see. Yeah, it was a good time. Uh, it's basically what it is. I've been on the road for like I feel like a month and a half. Basically, the snowboard community is my family outside of my like direct family mm-hmm. um, and it's worldwide which is crazy like Willie I did a little uh, still talking episode talking about the best part of snowboarding and that's traveling because of the people you meet and they become your friends and and uh, worldwide family I guess so it's like all of a sudden you feel like been fortunate like you said that in being involved in the snowboard world in a time where all you did was travel and meet people and snowboard with them, basically. And then you try to film and take photos, but you still were doing that along the way. So all of a sudden, 20 years later, 30 years later, you probably still have it as well. You have people all over the entire world that you can just maybe like, and now with the internet, you can just contact and be like, hey, I'm in town, let's go ride. Mm-hmm. And so basically the earth is my mountain drink. <laughs> nice. And uh, you can try, like, since once you start using your snowboard as a tool to travel the world, you have toolboxes all around the world with mountains and, and workshops all around the world to go use your tools and build homes and friends and, and relationships all around the world, which is insane. And that's why this trip's kind of like overwhelming because all of that was just kind of into one and like the. The knowledge of snowboard history and experiences that were in that room, like from Hosnick to YB to, to everybody, to people we never knew or heard of, was just like, every, you know, 90% of the people in there had full gray hair. Yeah, and it was or no hair. <laughs> or no hair. And, and they were like, especially talking to like uh, Trent Bush, he's just like, oh yeah, Wave Raiders Snowboard Shop opened in 1981. I worked there in 1985. And you're just like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, what was in snowboarding before that? There was no snowboard shops in there. It was like Jake Burton freaking went into my buddy Doran's dad's uh, telly shop in, like, the 70s, and, like, they were like, what are those things, dude? And basically told him to get lost. And, you know, so those that crew was basically, those are the the roots of snowboarding all in one room. 100%. It was insane. And, like, more than any room has ever handled I think which was like overwhelming so pretty fortunate that we got to be able to do that we're a part of this era of snowboarding still you know what was interesting too is uh, the, 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 the talent and skill ability did not drop at all like there was um, that guy um, Jeff Renner I think was his name yeah 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 Dirt Dirt yeah, comes yeah. from Hawaii hasn't snowboarded in two years yeah. But is hanging with Chad in cat terrain, jumping off cliffs. Yeah. Like, those were the people that were, there was kind of a personality archetype of, like, a very, like, athletic, kind of a very, 
I don't know how to put it, but, but, but everybody, I mean, and there was a lot of, uh, women on the trip too, that were really strong riders. I mean, everybody handled, uh, the terrain really well. I thought that was, that was impressive. Yeah. Like there was nobody, uh, if anybody, anybody ever goes on a cat or heli trip and you spend all this money, you get there and then you have this one guy that's an intermediate athlete, he's going to hold up the whole group. Well, this was like a well-functioning Navy SEAL team of snowboarders yeah. that just freaking crushed. Pretty insane. Like, you think of any other, like, skateboarding and surfing. Like, I don't know if that would happen in skateboarding and surfing. I don't think, well, I don't think yeah. it could in skateboarding. Yeah, like, 40 people all go and skate, like, vert for two days. Like, that's, or surfing, like, you got to find the break, and it's not really a, the same as snowboarding because you're all kind of, surfing's pretty solo out there because you're all catching the one wave, you know? Yeah. We, we, were catch, we would have 10 people catching the same wave every single run, you know? I don't know. The camaraderie or whatever was, like, insane, I thought. Um, yeah, because in skateboarding or surfing, maybe if you're surfing, you could be on a boat somewhere in yeah. the ocean as a, as a crew. Or out, you know, waiting on the, the line. Yeah. Yeah. But being in the cat, you just, I mean, just the shit talking and the fun and the, yeah. you said it, the camaraderie was so cool. Pretty wild. That was, uh, I mean, I wish we had more time to, like, get to know the people that we did know better. Like, to talk to Matt Lionel about his movies. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Like, I know about Whitey's movies. I know about Hostick's movies. I know about Redness's movies because I made them with them, you know? And then... And then I'm sure Chuck, well, Chucky made movies, right, pal? Chuck Riggs and, and Bobby Graves. Bobby, oh, yeah, duh. Bobby made Blag, the Joyride movies. And so I know those guys, you know? But, like, I met Matt Lionel last night. Like, Justin's like, what up? You don't know Circus? He's right there. I'm like, no. I'm like, and then I'm like, that shot of Mohawk Matt hitting that sign at Copper where Ched, like, is still thinking about ollieing it at Copper, you know? Like, just these insanely classic stories that don't really exist in the real world <laughs> we're all sitting right there as for every single snowboard nerd in the world to just kind of pick apart so two days wasn't enough but that's all right there's going to be another tuesday two years from now so you know but respect j2 and uh like as you you met him like later in the years when you came mm-hmm. out but when i first moved to colorado we'd go to Vail and he was still living there and he's on burton and i remember it was like the coca-cola half pipe and He'd come through and he'd have like the switch suitcase methods in the half pipe. Super good switch rider. And they're like the king of logs in Vail. Like there's nobody to this day that has even come close to the logs that he's done. Like he has these insane, the same insane ability to just sit on the log and not fall off and go through like goalposts all day long. And, and it was amazing. Like that was like a huge part of respecting his style and like doing like the back lip on the old post office rail mm-hmm. and to speak of another dude here Nate Cole was here he did the long rail and bail like at the school like pretty sure Pato's kid went to school there and uh, got to the end of it and then nose ollied over the little over the little uh, electric box at the bottom and then but yeah so twos did the 95 and then Whitey started making movies again in 99 98 99 he made the revival and then our buddy Kurt got the job to film because of M3 and then twos was just like i'm back in you know kind of that scene and like he he had so much energy like the energy that twos would spread everywhere he went i remember uh like him and whitey rolled by and they got done doing a bunch of rails in evergreen in colorado and they rolled by my place in silverthorne i was living with landry and karen and like just full energy he's like telling us about the rails and then you know for like an hour hanging out of my house him and whitey and then and then obviously he deuces in my bathroom right before he leaves and he just laughs. He's like, I'm out of here. And like my, my apartment stunk for like half the day. <laughs> but anyways, that was the character of twos. And then all the way into brainstorm, he was getting clips into half. I don't even know happy hour, all that stuff. Uh, he had a long career, out. a long yeah, pro snowboarding career. career. Yeah, for sure. For holding those pizza boxes and riding those logs from like the beginning to end, even like, you know, like the Ali him and Ali were kind of like side by side mm-hmm. the whole time, you know? And, uh, but yeah, I mean that, and then obviously all the way up to the point where he was like, uh, hanging out at my house uh, around 2006 and he ended up like moving to Utah and kind of lost touch because I kind of quit going to Utah too. And, uh, but yeah, 
he was a, a person that snowboarding will remember forever. And that's kind of another good reason we're doing this, because like, fuck, you gotta spread the, spread the fact that snowboarding builds character. And I still, I said it as memorial, was like, for years, I lived vicariously through my friends' characters. And J2 is like the top of the crop for that, you know what I mean? Because I'm an introvert, I don't say much, I hang out. And mm -hmm. when you're hanging out with J2, you're just like, you know, you're part of the, you're in, you're in his character, living vicariously through him at the, at the scene. So, that makes sense? Yeah. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there'll be two groups of people. There'll be people listening to this that knew J2, that know exactly what we're saying, or knew of him, because there's a lot of people who knew of him. Yeah. Um, and then there'll be a different crop that doesn't know uh, you know, younger people might not know who he is, yeah. but I'm sure he's got a, a, a decent catalog of his video parts on YouTube that you can yeah. check out. Um, but really kind of a carefree style. Like, so when we were, he had, um, one of his friends, Zoe was putting up photos of him inside the cat when we were catboarding, you know, in memorial for me, you could see he partied and had fun and he had this board that said weed on it and he had a wig on so he, he was just kind of a, a I mean you just say yeah. character but he was just yeah he was, he was personality authentic like, as yes a, as yes. authentic as it gets yeah is a way to describe J2 for sure yeah yeah if years after you pass away there's a ballroom of people getting together uh, to honor your memory you know you, you've made a, a good impact yeah. and that, that's that certainly what he did cry. Like snowboarding now, it's hard to find authenticity, authenticity in, in the industry. It's a dog eat dog world, and twos was like, yeah, the best for sure. But with that being said, yeah, I would cut it. Respect twos, yeah. love you, buddy. Can't wait to see you. Take it easy.